Uh, let me call to order this uh, meeting of the City of Bloomington Planning Commission for February 8th, 2021. Um, we have a uh, fairly brief agenda tonight. Um, uh, just uh, a couple of housekeeping items and one petition tonight. Uh, the standard at Bloomington LLC, that's SP 3120. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, get started by calling the roll. Great. Sorry, I didn't have my microphone plugged in. Okay, uh, here we go. Um, Kenzie? Here. Kate? Here. St. John? Here. Burrell? Here. Cockrum? Here. Just a second. Seabor? Here. Herrera? I see him waving. Um, okay. He's, he's definitely here. Perfect. He is. Thank there you. We go. Sandberg? Here. Okay, I don't see uh, in right Randolph here. Okay, thank you. Oh, Whistler, so sorry. Here. Thanks. All right, so we do have a quorum. We will proceed to um, reports, re resolutions, and communications. There are no minutes to be approved. So are there any reports, resolutions, or communications from staff tonight? Yes, so we will need to do a couple of housekeeping things tonight. The first uh, is a rules of procedure amendment. We'll ask you to vote on and approve. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the packet I sent, you could see uh, what we're asking for is to amend the references to plat committee members and um, uh, the hearing officer to allow engineering staff to be able to serve as well. As most of you probably know, if not all, um, the planning and transportation department, the engineering staff was moved um, starting at the beginning of 2021 to their own department. So some of those um, roles uh, on our committees are actually intended to be served by um, uh, what is that staff. And when we were combined a number of years ago, the language was changed. And so now we need to change it back. So what we're asking to do again is to amend the references to those who can serve as plat committee members and the hearing officer to allow for engineering staff to be optional as well. So we would need um, a motion and a vote on that. Okay, um, I think it might help, Jackie, if you could just kind of state what, what you're looking for in the form of a motion there. Sure. Um, yep. So a motion could look like a uh, uh, move to amend uh, plan commission rules of procedure in order to allow for uh, engineering staff to serve um, on both the plat committee uh, and hearing officer. As hearing so officer. moved. Second. Second. All right, Susan moved. I we had a couple of seconds there. I, I'm not sure who that was. I got it. Thank you. You got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do we need a roll call vote on this? Yeah, I think we need to because it's Zoom. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and do that then. Let's okay. call the roll. Great. Kate. Yes. Saint John. Yes. Burrell. Yes. Cockrum. Yes. Seabor. Yes. Herrera? Yes. Sandberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. And Kenzie? Yes. Great, thank you. The other item we have um, housekeeping is uh, we put off um, um, choosing the plat committee members. Uh, we wanted to wait till uh, Andrew Seabor, who has, is joining us tonight, was on staff so I could go over who he would like to serve from his group. Um, and uh, so first of all, welcome Andrew to Plan Commission. And uh, secondly, let's go ahead. Um, what we <clears throat> uh, discussed last month, I believe was that uh, uh, Jillian Kinsey would um, entertain continuing to serve on the flat committee. Uh, you will need to appoint an alternate um, for that as well. Uh, and then the second member of flat committee is a member from city utilities. Mike Carter has agreed to serve again with Phil Peden as his alternate. And then from staff, uh, 
Roy Ayton from engineering has agreed to serve with Patrick Durkis as his alternate. Um, so those are five that we are proposing. And then um, I wasn't sure who the alternate uh, from plan commission was going to be. If anyone wants to discuss that. I'm, I'm happy to keep serving as the plan commission representative to Platt. I don't remember who else doesn't have another appointment who could be the alternate though. When does this typically meet, Jillian? Four o'clock, right before our meeting here. So the same day as pl uh, plan commission at 4 p.m. Um, typically not more. I would say today we went about 45 minutes and that was <laughs> longer than we've gone and I don't know how long. It's usually much uh, faster than that. Anyone else willing to step up? I don't know if that's a role that should be played by a council person, but I would do it as an alternate. No one else is chomping at the bit. I think it's perfectly appropriate for for you to play that role, um, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. I don't, I don't think there would be any any kind of conflicts there. Happy to so. do that then, and and Jillian would let me know if she needs a backup. Yep. Great. If there's more discussion, just stop me. But uh, basically, so we would be looking for a motion um, for to set the plat committee as. Uh, Jillian Kinsey is the representative from Plan Commission with Susan Sandberg as the alternate, Mike Carter as the utilities representative with Bill Heaton as the alternate, Roy Ayton as the uh, City of Bloomington staff member, um, and with Patrick Durkis as the alternate. So, so moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Let's call the roll. St. John? Yes. Burrell? Yes. Cockrum? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Herrera? Yes. Sandberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Kinsey? Yes. And Kate? Yes. Nine zero. thank you. All right, thank you all for your willingness to serve. We appreciate that. Um, any other reports, resolutions, or communications from staff? Sorry, no, that's all we have again, besides, um, of course, welcoming Andrew um, that uh, began um, last month uh, in the role of city engineer and so therefore sits on this uh, body in that role. So we're glad to have him. Thanks. Yes, welcome back, Andrew. Good to see you again. Um, any other reports, uh, resolutions, communications from other commissioners, anything to report? All right, well, we'll jump right into the petitions then. We have one petition on the agenda this evening, SP 31-20, uh, the standard at Bloomington LLC. This is uh, property at 301 East Brownstone Drive. Uh, request for major site plan approval to allow the construction of a multifamily development with 440 dwelling units. And we have uh, Eric Grulick here to present. Are you with us, Eric? I think so. Uh, yeah, thank you for you. having me on the show tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, this is a request for the standard uh, at 301 East Brownstone Drive. This is for the site that they received approval from to rezone uh, from a planned unit development to mixed use student housing. Um, so the petitioners are carrying forward tonight with that request to approve the site plan. Uh, this would allow for a 440 unit uh, development to be constructed on the site. Uh, to the north of this, you've got a mix of single family housing and multifamily residences. Uh, to the east, you've got CBU, or I'm sorry, the uh, Duke Utility Substation, uh, as well as some IU properties. Uh, to the west of this, you have some mixed use uh, developments, some multifamily residences. Um, so the petitioner is proposing to remove all of the existing uh, apartments and buildings that are on the site. Um, in order to allow for the site to be completely redeveloped with three new buildings. Uh, the buildings would be connected by a um, uh, exterior walkway uh, that connects all the buildings. The center building would have a parking garage on it. 
uh, with apartments along the front in order to mask the front of that building. Uh, 14th Street runs along the front of this building. Uh, there would only be one main drive cut from the site uh, onto the adjacent public road, that is for the parking garage. They've shown three additional access points for emergency access. Uh, we'll work with the fire department. They've kind of indicated that signage is the best way to prevent those areas from being used for delivery vehicles and any kind of long-term parking. So we'll work on those appropriate signs with the grading permit. Uh, Grant Street uh, runs through the Terra Trace Apartments Complex just to the north of this. And I've shown that here on the red arrow. Um, the right of way is there uh, as it moves through the Terra Trace Apartments and the transportation plan calls out for a possible conversion of the railroad line that runs along the south side of this property that kind of transects east-west through the city uh, to hopefully be converted over to a rails to trails program similar to the B-line trail uh, at some point in the future. So to keep that kind of possibility open and to connect this site through the neighborhood to the north as well as to that, that railroad line if that happens in the future. Uh, the petitioners have also placed one of those access drives in an access easement uh, so that that could function as a connection opportunity from the neighborhood to that rails to trails uh, if that transpires in the future. Um, so as I mentioned, the site would be developed with three new buildings. Uh, these would all be student housing oriented. Uh, the center building would be primarily a parking garage. Uh, the petitioners would also have a small retail component at the northeast corner of the site. Uh, there would be substantial landscaping installed throughout the property as well uh, to meet all of the landscaping requirements. The site kind of transitions in grade as you move from east to west. Uh, it loses about 50 feet of elevation as you move across there. Um, so the petitioners have broken the building up into three separate components uh, that kind of have a staggered elevation as you move across the site. And that is to help work with the uh, the change in topography that they that they have across the uh, the, the property. Uh, it's a significant amount of property frontage along 14th Street. Uh, it's over 700 feet. Um, so there's a lot of change in topography that they that they have to deal with here. Um, so they have submitted renderings of all of the proposed buildings, and I'll just kind of step through those. Uh, in general, the buildings have all been designed with a, a brick masonry base. Uh, the upper floors will have cementuous siding, uh, as well as some, uh, some elements of EFIS. Uh, they've changed the building height uh, along the modules there to help break up that, uh, that building face, uh, as well as they have modulation along the horizontal uh, length of the building as well, ins and outs, uh, to create a variety of building features and, and elements. Uh, this is a rendering looking at the 14th and Dunn intersection. Uh, this would be the portion of the building that would have the retail component uh, that you'd see there at that corner. Um, so again, as you can see, kind of a mix of building materials, mix of colors, uh, canopies and awnings, uh, as well as certain elevations or design elements on the buildings that break up the look and the feel to, to really give you a good variety as you move across the building. Um, so this is the rendering of the western, or I'm sorry, the easternmost building. Uh, the retail component is on the left side of your screen. Uh, this is the elevation as you would see it from 14th Street. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you can see that walkway that would connect this building to the, uh, the center building that would have the parking garage. Um, so this is that area. Uh, the parking garage is entered or accessed from the west side of the building. So there are no drive cuts directly onto 14th Street for the parking garage. Um, that enter the front, that is, uh, the, the entrance is on the right side of this building. Um, so you, you don't see that from the street. Um, and then, then this is the westernmost building. Uh, again, this kind of staggers along. So you see a four story element on the left side uh, with a five story, six story almost on the right side. Uh, and then it steps down to an elevation to a one story area. Uh, and then on the right side of the screen is an outdoor amenity pool. Um, so that is uh, kind of located on the west end of the site. So it really kind of transitions in height. Um, so you don't ever really have an overall general looming sense of mass uh, with the amount of buildings that are shown here. So the petition has done a great job of incorporating modulation and change um, throughout the site. Um, so as I mentioned, there would be substantial landscaping that would be installed throughout the property to bring it into compliance. Uh, this is the kind of west side of the site. So you can see a heavy amount of buffering 
uh, between this property to the west as well as to the railroad tracks in the south. Uh, the petitioners would be installing a 10 foot wide sidewalk along the front um, with a tree plot. Uh, you can see on the left side of the screen along the street, uh, they've got four or five street trees that are back behind the sidewalk due to uh, proposed utilities. Um, we're gonna continue to work with them to hopefully get those utilities out of that tree plot so we can have a uniform tree plot uh, as you move along 14th Street. Uh, but as you can see here, they've installed street trees in that tree plot as, as best as they can. There are overhead utility lines here, which necessitate a smaller version of uh, street trees, uh, but they have incorporated all of those in the, uh, uh, in the tree plot. Um, so this last slide is the landscape uh, plan for the easternmost building. This is the 14th and Dunn intersection. So this is where the retail shop is. Um, so the petitioners have heavily landscaped the fronts of all of the buildings as well as the interior courtyard. Um, so the retail component is on the, the northeast side of this building. Um, and so they've kind of cut through the sidewalk to help uh, move pedestrians through there. There's also some utility boxes at that intersection that they've had to work around. Um, so the, the 14th and Dunn intersection has a, a lot going on with existing utilities and right of way. Uh, so the petitioners have done a good job incorporating pedestrian connections through there, uh, as well as incorporating bicycle parking. Um, so the center parking garage will have an interior room um, devoted to bicycle parking. Um, so they have both wall mounts uh, as well as mounts on the floor to secure the bicycles. Um, so they would be required to meet all of the requirements of the UDO for bicycle parking. Um, so there's over 200 bicycle parking spaces that are required for this project. Um, so the petitioners have incorporated both uh, bicycle parking within the building as well as uh, hoops outside of each of the buildings to provide uh, bicycle parking area for uh, guests as well as the, the tenants as well. Um, so with that, uh, we did find that this meets all of the site plan review criteria uh, that pertain to the project, and we are recommending that the plan commission adopt the proposed findings and approve the petition with the three conditions that are listed in the staff's report. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Is there a representative from the petitioner who would like to uh, add anything to the presentation? I see someone, I see Aaron waving there. Let's see, you're muted currently. Are you able to, there you go. Uh, thank you. Um, I believe uh, I've also got a very short presentation as well. Kendall, uh, I don't know if he has presentation rights, but. Uh, yeah, can I share my screen please? Let me. Yep, there you go. Oh, all right. So just while we get that pulled up, I just wanted to thank uh, commission members today. And, and I, you know, this is the second time I think uh, I've had the pleasure of being in front of you. I, I appreciate you guys' time uh, very much. Um, so we're excited about bringing the standard uh, to Bloomington. And you know, we went through a rezone just recently. Um, and I just included some brief renderings here, which part of, uh, part of the last presentation I did. If you could flip to the next one, Kendall. Uh, and just remind everybody what the what the commitments that we made as part of our rezone were. Uh, one was to have on-site affordable and workforce housing component, which totals 15% of beds. Uh, we've now, uh, and this is kind of an addition to what uh, we had presented to you last time, we've now not only committed to meeting uh, silver standards, but we are now going to also get certified. And the retail component on the uh, northeast corner of the site, which you can see below, uh, was an additional commitment as well. Um, and I believe in, in our last meeting, your, your conditions of recommendation or approval were that we would be uh, not have a private shuttle, which um, we are of course uh, comfortable with. So uh, I, again, I appreciate everyone's time today and um, you know, uh, look forward to, uh, to bringing this project to fruition. All right, uh, thank you. Um, You've got uh, plenty of time remaining there if you'd like to uh, use that for um, responding uh, to questions in the, in the future as we go on here. Um, are there any questions from commissioners, either for staff or for uh, the petitioner? Uh, looks like Andrew is the first one I see there. Go ahead, Andrew. Thanks, Brad. Um, 
So please correct me if I go into too many details, just being my first uh, meeting back on the plan commission, but good to be here. Um, on this specific project, just a point of clarification. I know Eric, in your presentation, you mentioned the sidewalk was 10 feet and in the, side, in the report it states that as well. Um, but I think in the petitioner letter that I read, it said seven foot sidewalks. So I just wanted to clarify how wide the sidewalks will be along both street frontages. Uh, sure, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I was under the impression looking at the site plan that it was labeled as a 10 foot. Uh, the petitioner can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Uh, this is Kendall. I believe Andrew is correct. I think it's 10 feet on the east and then seven feet along the north side of the site. And so I guess if that's the case, my, my follow-up question is if seven foot or 10 foot along 14th Street, what is the city standard? Uh, I believe we took that directly out of the transportation plan. Okay. Um, a, a question sort of related to sidewalk is on, on the plans I saw a portion of the sidewalk is outside the existing right of way and with this previously being rezoned, I just wasn't sure if there was going to be right of way dedication or easements or how um, that was addressed um, through the project process. Um, so with the rezone, they did have to dedicate right of way, but there, we have all the required right of way for 14th Street. Uh, 14th Street is just required, I believe, 60 feet of right of way uh, as a shared greenway. Um, so we have all the right of way that is required. Um, so that is why some of that sidewalk will need to be placed in an easement. Okay. Thank you for that. And then my last general question is, is about parking, I saw in the packet there was a letter from an adjacent I believe, business talking, asking about visitor parking. And I was just curious um, how this parking garage, how accessible it'll be to the retail component of the site or to visitors to the site. I'm just curious yeah, how, how visitor parking will be accommodated. So I'm pretty sure that's a question for me. Um, we've got visitor parking as part of our uh, garage uh, format. It's something we typically accru in include across the country. Obviously, uh, it's pretty common for guests to have people visit, and sometimes they bring cars. So that'll be within the structured park. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And and sort of related, um, I know it's student housing. I'm just curious more about deliveries and drop offs for the retail component, knowing it's away from the parking garage. I don't know what type of retail will be there or um, the apartment units if they'll be furnished or not, like how people would move in and move out um, just um, as a part of that process. Yeah, so our, our residences are fully furnished. So that obviously cuts down quite a bit on the move in and move out process. Um, you know, and I think as it pertains to uh, the, the retail loading, um, yeah, I think that's something we're happy to comply with city policy on. I, I don't know what the city policy is off the top of my head, but it is a very small retail space and it's likely to be something like a coffee shop, which probably doesn't get a ton of deliveries. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll certainly pay that due attention as we're kind of progressing. Okay. And, and my final question, I think this is for you, Eric, and it's just to confirm level of detail at this level versus it goes through grading permitting process, like tree placement related questions in relation to stop signs and things like that, or curb ramps at intersections. I'm assuming that's those details are worked out in future reviews. Yes, that's correct. So we would get into that very specific with the grading permit. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Any other questions? Uh, Commissioner Kinsey. Thank you. So a couple things. Um, one, I wonder if the petitioner or staff can talk a little bit about the commercial addition to this. What was the thinking on that and how did that evolve? What's your hope for that? All right. 
Um, so the, I think initially when we were evaluating the site, we, we, we did not intend to commercial component, uh, but in our discussions with city council and as part of the rezone, uh, they had requested that uh, we include a small retail component on the Northeast corner of the site. Uh, and our feedback at the time to them was that we would be happy to include that, um, uh, provided we would be able to do so uh, without disturbing our existing plans for the site. And as, as it turns out, that, that turned out to be the case. And so that is why uh, there is a retail component. Thank you for clarifying that. I, I didn't remember seeing it before. That's good. Okay. And, and given all the description about students being the primary audience for this and the fact that they'll be walking, likely walking to campus and not need to move their cars around, I wonder if there's um, consideration given to all of the different ways that they can get inside this really pretty significantly large structure, wherever they're living. Are there multiple access points to multiple buildings or how does that work? And will they specifically be able to access via that corner commercial real estate place? Is that an access point for the entire apartment building too or not? Yep, so we have uh, a primary lobby and then we have uh, secondary and tertiary lobbies and other buildings. In, in all, essentially, there's one lobby in every building, but one of them is the main lobby. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have studied, and I think we're still studying um, how the building will interact with that retail space because the retail space was a new a new change to the project, so it, we're still looking into it. But there may be a grade change issue from connecting from inside to that retail space. So I guess to answer your question, in an ideal world, I, I think I would allow a connection there. Um, I just don't know if it's going to be feasible without stairs and, and you know, or ramping, significant ramping, which would be an issue. Okay, thank you. And then one other question about the bicycle parking. I'm glad to see it indoors in that way. Does that automatically um, allow scooter parking too? Are they the same dimensions or? Is that, are they different dimensions to allow both in that space? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, we do have John Treber on as well, my architect, to maybe be able to talk a little bit more in, in detail about that. Yeah, given that, that as a mode, a popular mode of transport. Sorry, what's his name listed here? Uh, it would be, it should be Treber, J. J. Treber, maybe? Got it. Yep. Should. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, right now it's primarily bike parking, but we do have the ability to add scooters. So we have not added the dimensions for scooters, but there are uh, locations that we can accommodate. Okay, great, good. Um, I think. That, that Well, I have one more environmental commission question about the difference between LEED Silver status and their environmental commission's interest in emerald status. And I wondered, one, I'm glad that you're moving towards silver certification, but I wondered now it makes me think about why not emerald. So I wonder if the petitioners could comment on that. Yeah, um, so we, we studied... Um, uh, additional certification levels as part of this kind of process. And we had known um, a couple of the council persons um, and one in particular had expressed that interest very early on. Um, and, and I think if I'm being uh, totally transparent, I think we had serious concerns about our ability to even do it if money weren't an issue. Um, now, obviously that's, that's not true and money is an issue, but uh, you know, I think getting emerald status on a residential, almost purely residential building is very difficult. Uh, and, and, you know, I think we, we estimated several million dollars of additional costs to do it, um, which really just wasn't feasible. Okay, thank you. That's it for me. All right, thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Commissioner Cockrum. Great, I just, uh... I'm hearing the commercial questions, but I just have a couple of, uh, so the, the, um, the square footage on the commercial, how much square footage is it that you'll be losing out? 
Uh, we're between 500 and 1,000 right now. Okay. The other question is you mentioned a, a coffee shop. Um, is there plans to install an, a grease interceptor or is that going to be something done? Uh, yeah, so we studied both uh, grease and venting and, um, you know, I'm not sure if it's in the current set of plans, but it will be included uh, in, in our permit submittals. Okay, perfect. And, and the last question I have in this, and this could be for Eric or you, Aaron, but the, uh, the fire lanes, um, interesting. How, how do you plan on managing those? They seem like a, uh, you know, just um, keeping students from u- utilizing those lanes for drop off, pick up or whatever. How do you plan to manage those fire lanes that you have around the buildings? Um, I, I, it's probably an operations question. So I think it's, it's probably more for me. Um, I believe because they're fire lanes and, and Eric may know the answer to this or, or, uh, Steve, but I, I don't think we can block them, mm-hmm. um, which I think is where the recommendation from fire came regarding providing excellent signage. Um, you know, we obviously do patrol and we, we have security on site and, and if people are using that as a loading or parking facility, you know, that's something that we can immediately address. Um, and and we do on, on our properties throughout the country. Um, so I, I think that's, it's really just, a, it's a bit of, you're right, it's a challenge and it's something that we're gonna have to be very paying very close attention to, but I don't know that we're able to totally block them without violating kind of uh, the crux of fire code. Yeah, I, I agree. I've managed buildings similar to this. So I think operationally it can be a challenge, but, but I completely um, see the purpose form around the building. So Aaron, thank you. All right, thanks, Chris. Any other questions from commissioners? Uh, I have one question. Um, and this could be for staff, uh, when that some of the uh, building, and I wondered if you could um, just do two things, one sort of maybe point out where that is and then also just remind me um what our restrictions are on on using EFIS. i know that at least within the downtown that um was not an allowable material um but i guess it is maybe outside of the downtown if you could just help me remember what the restrictions are on that in the in the code yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, try to bring up uh, one of the elevations and just kind of go through if I can on this detail and point out where it is. Uh, it's really kind of in the, the middle of some of the modules. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in here. Um, so you've got a brick brick base uh, that kind of extends up into some of the columns uh, and then you've got the fiber cement. So these these areas where you see uh, anything that's labeled as the, uh, this one may not have it. Uh, so the, let's see, the FB, the FB3 and the FB4, I think are some of that. Um, but to answer your, your other question on what's allowed and not allowed, so if it is allowed, um, we are proposing some amendments to the UDO to tighten up the restrictions in the student housing district, uh, but those were, those were not specifically cleared out or prohibited, um, so they would be allowed to use EFIS here. So currently it is just generally permitted in the, um, in the student housing zone, but it is, it, it is prohibited in other zones? Yeah, so it's prohibited in the downtown. It's not allowed in the other residential districts or the commercial districts. Uh, However, it is not listed as a prohibited um, finishing material right now in the student housing district. Um, I wonder if the if the petitioner might just comment on that. Is there is there a particular reason why you felt that if this was a, a a better uh, material here than continuing with cementitious siding uh, or or masonry that as you've got a lot of that in the, the building as well. Um, uh, let me unmute. 
Uh, so this question is for uh, John Treber. I, sorry, I couldn't say that without <laughs> waving my hand. Uh, can we uh, unmute him by chance? Yes, uh, the EFIS is, is labeled under EIFS one through, I believe, four. Most of the EFIS is actually interior to the courtyard. So I think very oh, little, yeah. if any, is off of 14th okay. Street. Is there an elevation that shows the interior uh, courtyard? Uh, yes, we do have one. I don't, I didn't have it in my slideshow presentation, but let me, uh, let me pull up one of the ones from the renderings and I can have that displayed in a minute. And again, I think if the, the other question was uh, why EFIS, uh, it, it's a cost item. But again, if there's some areas that are of concern, then uh, we can absolutely look at uh, using fiber cement. Are you still trying to find that that elevation? Uh, yeah, I'm working. Uh, sorry, me? Andrew. I've got I've got it up, um, and and like you said, uh, it's mostly on the courtyard elevations and on the inside. Hold on a second. Eric, this is Kendall. I found it actually. So these are the courtyard elevations, and this is where it shows the EFIS. And so in these renderings, the the SDG is is what 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 what's the material that's SDG represented there? SDG is a SDG? fiber cement panel. Okay, so you've got, yeah, you've got the fiber cement uh, sort of side by side then with kind of alternating with with the EFIS, is that right? Yeah, you have to unmute John Trieber again. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just a sec. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay. So, sorry right. for the delay. <laughs> sorry. All right. Thank you. Um, that that was all. That was all my questions. Any other questions from uh, from commissioners? All right. Oh. Uh, yes, Commissioner Sandberg. Can we just have the clarification on the affordability factor? Uh, did I read somewhere it's 15% and is it affordable or a workforce formula? Yeah, so it's, uh, yep, it's 15% it's of bedrooms, uh, which um, if you break it down into kind of a, uh, it's, it's some of both, I guess, is where I was going with that. Um, we've got uh, some at true, like it's it's roughly two thirds at the lower of the two, so affordable, and one third at the higher workforce. All right, and will those be spread throughout the three buildings? No, so we've signed and we had a have an agreement. Oh, sorry, they will be signed through. Uh, they will be throughout the three buildings. I'm sorry, I misunderstood the question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? All right. Seeing none, then we will go to public comment. Um, if you would like to make public comment on, on this, uh, the best way to do that is uh, uh, click on the participants tab at the bottom of your screen, and you will then see a, uh, a button at the bottom of that participants uh, panel that says raise hand. That allows you to raise a virtual hand that we'll be able to see and, and recognize you. Um, you'll have up to five minutes to make your comments. And, um, and Jackie will let you know when, when it's your turn to speak. 
So just a second. I think um, we have something here from Dave Askins. Just a moment. We're having. Hold on. If you're having any trouble raising your virtual hand, you can always turn your camera on and give us a wave with your your real hands, and we'll try to try to recognize you. I do see. Have. There you are, can, Dave. Can yep. you hear me? Yep. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, so when this uh, project was in front of the city council, there was a mention of the possibility of one unit being allocated as free housing to police officer. So I don't think that's a part of the zoning commitments, but I'm curious to know if that's still a part of the developers thinking and has that idea been floated past anybody at the uh, uh, police department here in Bloomington? Uh, second question involves parking. Uh, this project is planned to include 0.64 spaces per bedroom when the minimum in code calls for 0.5 spaces. Why build more parking than you have to under code? And also, uh, can you confirm that the leases for parking and the leases for units will be decoupled? Um, finally, a question about basketball. There's a basketball court shown in the drawings, and I'm just curious to know if that amenity is common to all landmark uh, developments or if that's just because this is Indiana. Thanks. All right, uh, thank you. Just um, as a, a note, uh, th this time is for public comment. We, we generally don't have back and forth uh, directly here during this period, but for those of you who have questions, we will do our best to get them addressed uh, once we return to uh, council comments. So um, who's next, Jackie? I don't see anybody else here with a real or virtual hand up. Let me check. Kay Olgis had, had uh, opened up her screen earlier. Oh, okay. Let's see, I'll just un mute her and see if she has something to say. Kay, do you have a comment for us? I'm a real girl again. Um, I, I am the president of the board of directors of Windfall Dancers, which is directly across the street from this project. Um, we are the nonprofit um, who uh, submitted the questions about parking and um, other things. Um, I, I did hear a mention that there will be a uh, security. I'm just, we've had an increase of vandalism in that area anyway, and we are the only business, um, and by business I mean nonprofit, um, and I have concerns about that many more bodies just in general being in the area, especially youthful exuberance, and I just wondered if there could be a little clarification as to what kind of management and security presence will be in the area? That's one question. And I guess my other question um, involves, we had been in the process of um, getting, looking into solar panels on our roof. And I'm wondering, um, what that building height directly across the street from our building, what impact that might have if you have any thoughts as to that. So those are my main questions. Oh, I guess one more, right. sorry. One, the, the last one involved the visitor parking. Um, and I do appreciate that you do have an allotment for visitor parking. Um, how, how much of the parking is allotted? So a thousand bedrooms, are you allotting, you know, five visitor spots? What, what's the actual allotment for visitors? I'm okay, done. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you. Any other public comments?
I don't see any hands raised. Jackie, anyone on the Facebook? Nope, and no okay. chats. Okay, last call for public comment. Going once, going twice. All right, we're back to uh, the commission for um, additional questions. Um, I see, let's go to Commissioner Sandberg. Yes, let me go ahead and start with the windfall dancers since they also did provide us a letter in our packet um, and start with the issue of the visitor parking because I know um, her business, her nonprofit group, along with the you know neighbors around in the Garden Hill neighborhood uh, do have a lack of parking in their area. And I think there is concern, especially now if there is going to be retail as well, that there will be adequate parking for not only the residents, but also for any, any business. And, um, you know, um, I think her question was, what is the allotment for visitor parking that is uh, uh, incorporated in the plan? That's for me. Um, so uh, we don't have a specified allotment right now. Um, that's uh, other than to say that, you know, as many have pointed out, you know, we, we believe we have more than sufficient parking uh, relative to our total project size. Um, and accordingly, uh, you know, typically the way we do this is we work closely with our operations team, uh, usually uh, shortly after starting construction to determine what kind of an appropriate amount of, of temporary parking needs to be. Um, you know, but that's something you know, obviously we can, we can certainly study further and uh, happy to address. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm asking the question on behalf of Windfall, so I hope that is sufficient to Kay's question. Uh, the other question had to do with the impact on her opportunity to put up solar panels. Uh, would there be any kind of data on what kind of shadows the building may cast on the, wind fill, the Windfall property, which is... Just to confirm, is she on the north uh, northeast side of our site? Could we have the, the screen up and maybe could we point to it compared to... The windfall location. I think I saw it on one of the maps. Um, I'll let John Trever maybe add a little bit of comment here. We did do sun studies on the property, uh, but that side of the building is also the lowest part of any structure on the building. It's only four stories. Uh, John, do you, you want to add any color there? Uh, yes, right now we're getting a solar consultant uh, engaged to go over the extent of solar panels, but currently we're looking to have solar panels in building two, the garage at the southwest quadrant of the building. Uh, John, John, yeah, I, I appreciate that. No, uh, th that's not the question. Uh, on the Oh, the, the actual solar shadows, the shadows casting into the building? No, uh, yes. No, on, the, on the building... It's not our building. Uh, there's a building from a neighbor on, on the northeast corner of the site across the street. And the question is, does our easternmost building shade her? Got you. Uh, we, we, can, uh, we can provide sun uh, shadow studies at uh, uh, worst case scenario so you can, you can get feedback. I don't believe it does based on the, the, the distance from 14th Street and the height of the building. That's a four story building at uh, that corner. So I don't think it does, but uh, we will get you that okay i think that would be appreciated by by windfall and then her last question had to do with security and uh monitoring of any kind of vandalism that might go on especially i think during game days there has been a problem there at that particular location yeah as was pointed out by um a number uh a number of people throughout this process and by someone earlier uh, in their public comment we we are going to be providing a unit for a bloomington police officer to live on our property um, and park their car there. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of our strategy for ensuring, uh, you know, uh, let's be honest, it's not just community crime, it's also, um, you know, our resident, we want our residents to feel safe as well. So it's, uh, it serves kind of the, the broader interest of, I think, everyone to have a very secure property. We've got on site management, um, you know, full, full teams on staff. I mean, things are monitored very closely, video cameras everywhere. Um, you know, I think we, we take security very seriously. 
Thank you very much. And I hope that answers uh, Ms. Ms. Aldrich's questions. Thank you, Susan. Any other questions from commissioners? I know there were some other questions raised um, during public comment that we may want to address. Does anyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jillian, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to take up the question that Dave Askins raised about decoupling the parking from the rent. Can you respond to that, how you normally do handle that? Yes, park the spaces are leased separately. Thanks. Any other questions from commissioners? All right, we I'm have, we have to, to answer the basketball question, I suppose. Yeah, I was I was going to pose that one myself, <laughs> and I was also going to ask whether that three point line that we see uh, uh, in the rendering is the the nineteen uh, foot nine inch high school line, or if that's the twenty two feet one and three quarter NCAA standard. We 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 have to know these things. So this was uh, there's kind of a couple of reasons here on this one. Um, I've looked at uh, this will be the first project that I've ever done with with a full size indoor basketball court. Uh, Landmark has done one before, or more, I think more than one actually before. Um, I think there are a couple of reasons here. One is I, I love basketball personally. Um, I, I coach a junior high team, so, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, and then second, you know, uh, Indiana's got a really storied basketball history, and we just felt like it was an excellent amenity, uh, and it would get a lot of use. So, um, yeah. Uh, is it a three-point line that will come to be measured? Uh, yes, it absolutely will uh, be 100% accurate. And uh, I'm looking forward to shooting some threes from that, from it. All right, thank you. Any other questions, uh, Commissioner St. John? Hi, thanks. Thanks uh, for being here, Aaron. Just a quick question. So to follow up on Windfall, so the question about security, you mentioned the police officer. What about other security? Did you say that? Did I just miss that? Yeah, I mean, I don't have, yeah, sure. So we, you know, we've obviously got um, front desk uh, service um, and, and uh, as well as ma office management, um, which kind of serve a dual role as in security as well. Um, you know, if you're asking if we have uniformed security officers around the clock, we don't. Um, we lock the doors um, at night. Um, you know, and this is, I mean, if, yeah. So that's that's kind of the situation there. Uh, we we do have people kind of patrolling the site as well. Um, you know, but again, it's, it's more like site staff as opposed to, um, as opposed to police officers. We are happy to work with the city in any capacity at all. If, if, you know, if uniform patrols or something they want to have around our property. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? Any uh, final comments? Any, anyone, are we ready for a motion? Eric, would you uh, mind just putting up on the screen uh, the staff recommendation once again? Sorry, can I ask for a clarification? Um, uh, Andrew had a question about the widths of sidewalks. Are we clear about which is which and what is what is what? I just want to make sure we get out of here knowing that. Eric, you could probably answer that. I just want to make sure we're we know what we're getting. Um, so it's a ten foot sidewalk along the east side of the site. Uh, it looks like some of it is seven. It's it's not specifically spelled out on the site plan, but uh, or I'm sorry, not dimensioned on the site plan. Kendall could probably hopefully answer that better. Yeah, it's all ten feet along Dunn, which is what the transportation plan calls for, and it's seven feet along Fourteenth. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll motion to approve the major site plan of SP 3120, the standard at Bloomington, to allow construction of a multifamily development with 440 dwelling units. With the uh, three conditions outlined uh, before us. 
Second. So the motion is, uh, just to clarify you, the motion is to adopt the proposed findings uh, and approve the site plan with the three commission, the three conditions as outlined in the staff recommendation. Yes. All right. Is there any final comment uh, before we call the roll? I'll just say it looks really good. Appreciate the petitioner working with staff so much and with the community to address their concerns and um, excited about the project. Any other final comments? No, I'll just say, uh, yeah, I think this uh, looks really good. The, the renderings are uh, are very nice, and uh, for a uh, for a project of this size and scale um, to come for site plan approval and only have uh, two public comments uh, is is quite telling. You've you've done something done something right here, so uh, appreciate that. Um, with that, I think we're ready to call the roll. Great. So the uh, uh, the motion is to uh, adopt uh, the proposed findings and approve the petition with the three conditions included. Um, Burrell? Yes. Cockrum? Yes. Seabor? Yes. Herrera? Yes. Sandberg? Yes. Whistler? Yes. Kenzie? Yes. Kate? Yes. And St. John? Yes. Nine zero. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all. That uh, uh, motion passes. That's our only petition on the agenda this evening. So um, thank you all for your time. Uh, we'll adjourn the meeting and we'll see you next month um, where we will begin uh, looking at uh, new UDO maps and uh, text amendments. So lots of fun ahead in, uh, in March. We'll see you all then. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.